The topic of this video is the informal assessment strategy known as focused listing. My name is Elaine Baird and I've made this video for one of the requirements of the Evaluation of Learning course offered by Vancouver Community College. First of all, what are informal assessment strategies? As the name suggests, they are informal because there are no grades awarded. They assess the student's comprehension of the course material. They give feedback to the teacher as well as the students so that both parties can adjust their methods if learning is not progressing smoothly. Teachers can select a strategy to meet the goals of the course based on their teaching goals inventory, the TGI. There are 50 different strategies listed in the book Classroom Assessment Techniques written by Angelo and Cross. What is the focus listing strategy? This strategy places attention on a single important item, the focus point. The teacher gives students a piece of paper, provides the focus point, and sets a short time limit, maybe two minutes. The students write as many ideas about the focus point as they can. The teacher quickly analyzes the results and adjusts teaching methods if necessary. What is the best context for the focus listing strategy? Focus listing works very well in courses that have large amounts of new material. For example, first year university overview courses and vocational courses. It helps students learn new terms and concepts. It's a great strategy to improve memory. It helps students develop good study skills. So it's very useful for adults who have been out of the school system for many years. What are the limitations of focus listing? Focus listing only asks students to recall information. It doesn't require higher level thinking. Because it focuses on one idea at a time, it doesn't particularly assist students to grasp the interconnectedness of their course concepts. What are advantages of focus listing? It's a simple, quick, and flexible method. It can be used for any size of class. It can be done in two minutes. Teachers can move around the room as the students write, and they can gain a sense of their course comprehension. The student's feedback is reliable and valuable because of the time limit of the technique. Students only have time to write what is most important to them, not what they think the teacher wants. If this technique is used before the teacher presents new course material, it can prime the pump. That is, it gets the students thinking about what they already know. Then, when they hear new information, they will be more receptive to it. What are the best practices for focus listing? The teacher needs to work through the focus listing first before giving it to the students to make sure that the focus is on the correct material. The point needs to be important enough and have enough breadth to be useful. The focus should not be so broad that students make wildly varying lists, nor so narrow that the lists are trivial. The teacher's focus listing becomes a master list. This strategy can be used before, during, and after a lesson so that the teacher can constantly tune the teachings to the learner's needs. How can the teacher give the learners feedback from the focus listing strategy? The teacher can quickly sort the student's responses into related and unrelated items. Then, these responses can be compared to the teacher's master list. At the beginning of the next class session, the teacher covers the problem areas of the focus list. If possible, the teacher can use quotes from the student's list. For review, teachers can give students their master list so that they can see which points they missed. In conclusion, I invite you to take two minutes to write a focus list your topic, the advantages of the focus listing strategy. I believe that you will find the focus listing strategy to be a valuable item in your teacher toolbox. 
Thank you for watching my video through to the very end.